now that I understand the depth of the depravity of this creature, this monster that I unwillingly helped to create, as if the suffering wasn't enough, the loss of innocence, the loss of everything to so many people, and used in ways I never thought imaginable. April 2015 to October 2023, eight years and the FNAF movie is finally coming out. Scotty boy, you did. Looks like this actually took a lot of work to come out. Unlike Security Breach. My father don't worry. But a couple people got wind of this Five Nights at Furries game. How could you not walk in and you find your son playing around with Toy Chica? Man, what the hell? What the fuck? You're a screenwriter. Do your job and write what you see on screen. You know what I see? A big hot chick. Money! I can sell this! Hey, Scott Cawthon, hack this. Of course, the idea of haunted or scary kids animatronics wasn't created by Scott Cawthon. You grab thing that kids love and then you make it scary. That's horror. <laughs> What the fuck? But once the FNAF mass hysteria hit and all these new FNAF games were coming out and everyone loved animatronics and shit, it feels a little disingenuous to say your movie about a group of murder bears is actually an original idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, makes sense, Willy. So in preparation of the FNAF movie, I just want to look at look, look at some of these things. It's like FNAF, but without Springtrap. Look, he doesn't always need to be there, little but these movies are really interesting to me because it's almost like an alternate dimension where the movie didn't take like 18 drafts until Scott said yes. Now it feels like a, a Scott just said, fuck it, call up Nick. I want As if the suffering wasn't enough. I've known a lot about these from random YouTube reviews about them, but I haven't really watched them except for one. So I decided to watch the one that looks like the most shameful copy first. It is Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland, that title's right, because Willy could be um talking about a penis. For those of you who don't get the joke, the joystick is a metaphor for penis. This released in 2021, which is weird. I swear it was like 2019. The director is Kevin Lewis, who I thought had something to do with the hug in 2018, but no, apparently not. Uh, I'm just losing it. It's another similar animatronic horror, so I shouldn't mention it. It's a short film, and it's actually pretty good, especially in comparison to the actual feature length version. The weird panda animatronic is way more interesting than Willy and his gang since there's more mystery around it. Also, it's just better designed in general. I like the idea of it having two faces like a bad cop from the Lego movie. And the set here is leagues better. I'm just gonna get into it now, but the set in Willy's Wonderland is such shit. It's a bunch of shittier, smaller rooms that are also just confusing, but it's this main stage room I have a problem with. It's so small, they just had to slap shit on the wall so there's something there. The only character theming there are are like posters and the animatronics themselves. And they're not spread throughout the location, they're just always on this shitty stage. And, and then this ball Pit. Why is there a ball pit in the dining room? It's just a collection of things that need to be there, but their specific spot doesn't make sense. Oh, what? There's a cool sign outside that looks like the Bucky's logo. Uh, okay, yeah, that's safe. How did Willy's Wonderland figure out what a mascot sign should look like in the FNAF movie can't? In comparison, the hug uses a real arcade, but put weird panda guy theming on it so it works. And that's why I think five minutes of this is better than an hour and a half. Let's go into Willy's Willy Land. Well... It's definitely a funnier existence than most things. The movie has a lot of ideas. Most of those ideas are from this, but that's still a lot of ideas. The director claimed it wasn't based on Five Nights at Freddy's, but I... I, I find that very hard to believe, especially when you made sure every main animatronic wasn't an animal species featured in FNAF. When I think of just animatronic characters, not even FNAF animatronic, I think of a bear and a chicken. And look who took both of those. Of course, again, evil animatronics isn't an original idea. An episode of Gravity Falls and Regular Show released before FNAF, and they're always compared to FNAF, even though they came before. And the Regular Show episode is way funnier because they aren't haunted or anything, they're just gangsters with guns. And the Gravity Falls episode somehow predicted FNAF and Doki Doki Literature Club. Lewis Dawkins is dead. Willie's copy is way more than that, and I think they should just own up to it. Are you gonna answer the question? No. The main character played by famous actor Nikki KG basically has the job of the night guard and acts like a video game protagonist. You're not safe in there. We got to get you out. No. He says nothing and then beats up the monsters. It's like a boss fight. They also explain the origin and it's just FNAF. Willis was built in 1996, the brainchild of Jerry Robert Willis. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it should. Jerry was one of the last century's most sick and sadistic serial killers. Okay, some of the creepiest, most depraved people of society made a pizza place. That, that just, just makes, makes me damn, damn sick. sick. Jerry spent most of the time cultivating similar sickos, 
I mean, these were the most depraved people you could ever imagine. Look at how scary and evil this motherfucker looks. Evil incarnate. I know it's kind of switched because it's the killers and the robots now, but whatever, the Venture Spirits. The overall look for the movie is, is fine. Most of the shots look kind of shit because of the shaky cam and this absolutely awful filter and this stupid lens flare that is like, it's like on every shot. Like, holy shit, it's so bad. At, I couldn't find like where they were in the room in half of these. But there are these shots that look really cool and stylish, especially towards the end when little Nikki is fighting Willie and all this cool confetti is everywhere. But it, yeah, it does look like the movie was dipped in fucking Breaking Bad filter. Mr. White. Let's talk about the camera. They put Doug Dimmodome in their movie. This guy's name is like Texas McAdoo or some shit. All of the animatronics are very bland and just say shit like this. Opilla bird joke. I'm gonna face them, My main problem with this film is that there's no like child aspect. You know what I mean? We need that disconnect as an audience for a bunch of children to love these dumbass people in suits, but none of that is in the movie. That's what made the idea of FNAF scary. Of course, it's not scary anymore, but the thought of a bunch of kids being murdered by this guy is maybe a little scary. The only children in the movie is during the flashback sequence that explains why Willie Afton is doing this because he's apparently last century's most sick and sadistic serial killers. But all we get is basically this. Some would say things they weren't programmed to say. Hmm, <laughs> wanna fuck daddy? Damn, I don't even know what the do is all that. Little bake out of the fucking closet. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. You fucking suck. Instead, there's this teenager plot, but they're literally here just to be killed. And then this, this, this is a weird, like, thing to notice. But the main girl sounds exactly like Velma from Scooby Doo. I checked. It's not, but it's it's really weird. You're not safe in there. We gotta get you out. <laughs> Two of them fuck because the opportunity of boating in front of Willie the Weasel only comes once in a lifetime. And then, like, main girl is hanging out with Nicholas at the end and Freebird is playing. Let's talk about Nick C. God, I wish that were me. He's the janitor, a character that's probably a body double during half the movie. They really tried to push Nicholas Cage's involvement here, and I'm just not buying it. Like, they said he impacted the actual designs of the animatronics. I don't believe that, but I do believe he came up with the idea for the janitor to be completely silent. It's just kind of baffling, honestly. I'm not even sure if it did its job right. Everyone is calling the janitor a badass in the movie, but instead he comes off as a weird asshole instead, and it's actually really funny. Like, there's this scene where main girl and the janitor are about to fight a robot and then his break starts and he just leaves to go drink soda dance and hump the pinball machine it's actually funny but i do wish he had he had a little bit more to him because he's such a nothing character with no backstory jay from red letter media came up with a really good idea while they did their review again i thought that was a setup for something where there was some reason he was playing it he went to willie's wonderland as a kid and he never defeated it and so now he's back to defeat the machine or something beat his high score. He just goes back there and plays it for no reason. Oh, Jay, it's like you've seen a movie before. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's perfect. Give him something more that makes sense, but it's stupid motivation, so he's still a weirdo. Overall, I think the movie is a scam, a sham, and a piece of trash to be dumped on the streaming, but also, it's, uh, <laughs> the next movie, not to release, Willie's released after this, but I got them mixed up. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fucking shit. I'm not changing the order. It's the Banana Splits movie. It is Willy's Wonderland. Unlike Willy's, this might actually be a changed early draft of the FNAF movie. There's no official, official confirmation, but it's pretty much true, come on. It's even in the trivia on Amazon. The weirdest thing about this movie is that it is actually based on something. The Banana Splits was a real thing. It was like a Hanna-Barbera show with these guys dancing. Why use real characters that nobody really knows? What's the point? It just made people who did know about the banana splits confused that they were like horror characters now. <laughs> What's even weirder is that the banana splits are like still actively being used in Warner Bros. shit. There's a show on HBO Max called Jellystone, which uses a bunch of Hanna-Barbera characters, and they are like reoccurring 
like they are the focus of more than one episode. You can't learn this shit from Dead Me. See, this is why I still matter. There might even be a reference to this movie in Jellystone because the characters are villains now and the elephant doesn't talk. What the fuck did this movie do? Uh, this movie's just like, I don't, I don't know why it exists. I, I guess I know. It's because the FNAF fandom needed something to chew on, but also, I, I, don't, I don't get it. It's mostly a competent film, but it's just so bland. Yeah, like, yeah, a bunch of people get show, they show up and they get killed by mascots. I don't care. It has none of that really strange energy that was in Willie's, despite everything. Willie's is just a really fun film with a couple of cool visuals. And even though both of these movies rip off FNAF, Willie's isn't based on whatever this is, so at least it's a little more creative. You know what kind of fucked up competition this is for Willie's Wonderland to win? Banana Splits is definitely a more coherent movie though like it makes sense most of the time it follows this family and the little kid really likes the banana split the dad is like a bad guy and cheats on the mom and there's this really funny scene of the older son talking about him um, the guy's a selfish prick he hates me he barely remembered his own son's birthday he doesn't even want to be here he'd rather be at work he's saying it like it's a fucking cinema set spoiler alert it's a dump the family goes to see the banana splits and everyone's having a great time but oh no they're being cancelled and the technician that, like, works in the boiler room, like, fucking codes them to be aggressive and killers. Why the fuck would you do that? It's not like he's even this movie's version of Afton. He's really not a threat or anything. They they, they just kill him. Also, yes, these are robots, not people in mascot costumes. Definitely not. You could have tried redesigning them a little bit more to look like robots, but okay, sure. The splits are all voiced by Eric Buza, who was the main Bugs Bunny guy, but he's, like, barely in this. It kind of just sounds like they got Eric Buza to do a cameo video and they kept reusing the line. My favorite part about this movie is probably Stevie. Who is Stevie? The Banana Split show has this human actor hanging out with the others and his name is Stevie and he was never a thing on the original Banana Splits. Who the fuck is this guy? That's Stevie. Nobody really likes him. Fuck you kid. This is Stevie's turf. He does whatever the fuck you want. Fuck you! It's really funny whenever he starts drunkenly dancing and shit. I love this scene so much. More movies should have this. Stevie learns that his show is getting canceled, and he immediately celebrates. I love him so much. He's like a drunk, shitty, sweaty PB Herman. This is penis. He's literally the first one killed, and yet he left such an impact. I'm pretty sure people draw fan art of this character. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> The rest of the side characters are like this assistant person that their brother falls in love with because I don't know he wanted to. This is true. These vloggers who you would expect to be like obnoxious and making fun of this place for clicks or whatever, but no, they're both just genuine fans of the banana splits and it's kind of hilarious. I bet it's strawberry from one of the sloppy time pies. Nope, that's not strawberry. I don't know what that is. They even like go backstage and the guy proposes. Uh, too bad this happened. Well, after, you know, that. At the end of the movie, it's teased the girl vlogger will become the fifth banana split. Wh why would you do that? Why nope, are you doing that's that? Not strawberry. Oh, yeah. Also, there's this guy that really wants his daughter to be a star, so he wants to see the producer, but then, oh, yeah, he's a meatbag only there to die. There's this, like, really serious scene where the dad is revealed as a cheater, and th th then his biggest hater walks out. I knew Look. it, man. I knew you were a scumbag. What are you doing? <laughs> Dick. Then there's like an actual well-written line. There was always Austin, and then there was Harley. Us. What a joke. That's, that's fucking, that's like, that's, that's like. Peacemaker. It's a good thing they got all the people who were good at writing marriage dramas to write a funny animatronic killer movie. Nope, that's not Strawberry. And then when the dad leaves, he's all like, Hey, guess whose night just freed up? You, you, look at this fucking guy. Dick. Did you hear me? What? What the f- Wait, wait. So, they cut his head off, stuck it back to the point where he looks completely normal, because, because it looks like, to me, the dad just fucking tugged on him too hard and his head fell off. Kim Kardashian's head fell off. Flegel, who was the dog, like, starts kidnapping the kids. And, oh, fuck, they gave these asshole red eyes, too. Why aren't people mad about this? And then Bingo, who is, like, the gorilla, captures the brother. And mom has to get all hot and shit to save him. I wish Snorky was the one getting hot. You, you know what I mean? Nope, that's not... <laughs> 
They start making these two, the producer and the dad guy that got his face, go through this Nickelodeon double dare shit, and it's probably the most creative scene. You, you don't see a lot of kids obstacle course saw trap stuff. The producer didn't even do anything. The other deaths, at least they were like trespassing and being annoying and shit, but the producer girl was actually like a sympathetic character, and she even passes the sloppy time course. Yes, it's, it's called sloppy time. I wish Snorky would give me some of that sloppy time. I'm joking. I'm joking. She did what they fucking wanted. They just kill her. They, they just fucking, they're fucking ruthless. Yo. <laughs> what the fuck? Don't you touch him! No. <laughs> the banana splits kidnap the kids for this fucked up show where they have like Stevie corpse on a bike and they start doing this shit. They also have the main producer guy, and I swear to God, this is an episode of iCarly. That this happened to Spencer. They free the kids and they go home. The end. I, I noticed this funny background extra who's being held like they were hurt, but they were literally nowhere in the movie. What the hell are you doing? It was all right. Needed more. The next movies I want to cover quickly, well, I'll try to, because they aren't really based on FNAF. They just have an evil mascot thing going on. In instead of evil Chuck E. Cheese, it's evil Furby. Holy shit. This is the Puka series. The first movie, well, I, I didn't watch the first movie in preparation for this. I'm sorry. I, I, I really just want to talk about the sequel because I will never have an excuse to talk about it again. And I want to expose more people to the experience that is Puka Lives. Puka 1 is a story about this guy who wears a mascot costume and he gets stuck in it or something. I don't care. Puka 2 is, is well, uh... We gotta stab the doll. Wait, I thought we were supposed to burn it! Yeah, well, they changed this story. <sighs> we gotta live stream it, too. I know about this movie because around when it came out, I recorded a review with my dear friend Seatbelt. I don't know why, I just want to do a random horror movie review, and this is what we landed on. That review never ended up happening, and the original recording is probably lost to time, but God damn it, it's been three years in the works, we're finally here. I feel like if you gave Caveman, like, a picture of Melissa, they start fighting over it. <laughs> the movie follows Derek, an author who wrote a book, and it failed, so now he's working for the Puka Company. He visits his friends, and I actually really like the cast of this movie. They, they come off as boring as, at first, but then they just kind of become endearing, and none of them are killed off. For, like, a body count, they just have to deal with this Puka shit, and I kind of love it. Maybe it's because the end of this movie makes these characters seem like epic badasses who are gonna beat the shit out of Puka's ass, but... Then the, the credits is, is like this cheap comic book art style and it looks like one of those animated true scary story videos. Why is there a guy wearing a pig mask on my screen? Yeah, <laughs> this thing Tails gets trolled. <laughs> Why does she look like that? <laughs> Derek is like infamous on the internet and he decides to make a scary story about Puka. It's kind of like a creepypasta sort of deal. Like Puka comes to life because the internet believes in him. It's like when little kids thought Slender Man and Jeff the Killer were real. Me personally? I've seen things that cannot be explained. There's a really creative choice they didn't have to do where the internet keeps grabbing Derek's idea of what Puka is and changing the design through fan art and misinterpretation. And as the movie goes on, Puka gets more grotesque. What the hell? That's actually fucking cool. They even set this up with a scene where they talk about, like, fucking Momo. Yeah, like this thing. They're not allowed to use Reddit and shit in this movie, and it's really funny. They can't use YouTube, they have to use like poo tube and shit. They have to use like the ABGN movie version where it's just like ass tube, shit tube, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Derek is in the elevator at his job, and then we have a great scene. What is happening? Name's Andy. I'm in charge of social media. I'm glad they told us this is Name's Andy. Andy. I had to know that information. Like, is this like the director's son? Who is this? I'm not saying I hate Andy. Name's it's Andy. actually an inspiring I'm in performance. Charge of <laughs> it's called Google, old man. Dude, this is the guy from uh, Big Hero 6. He's in the costume. Like, inside, outside. Outward, inside, outward, backwards, inside, out. He looks like Prince Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? He looks like Prince Aaron. Seventh, seventh grade girls. <laughs> Dude, seventh grade girls. There's so much fucking funny shit in this movie. There's a scene where one of their friends who's a police officer pulls up a picture of a charred corpse and the other guy's reaction is this Emmy, why do you have that on your phone you brought that up so fast there's something so genuine about that reaction i feel like they they brought in a writer to do one last draft and they just added all these really funny moments i feel like i haven't made a lot of jokes in this review yet and that, that's because I, I know this is our big comedic moment this is the funniest thing that ever be put to film oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, 
didn't his videos hurt kids? Yeah, kids. Adults, a lot of people did it. Like, a lot of people do it. Like, all kinds of people. Adults During do. the entire movie, Derek is being, like, harassed and shit by the internet. They, like, spray paint his car. This is all happening because Derek pissed off Jax. Jax is, like, a parody of the average yeah, YouTuber. Jack. And he just won't fucking leave Derek alone. Anyways, uh, uh, anyways I'm too busky. <laughs> we, we need to dissect this scene frame by frame. Uh, okay. So, so Derek grabs his phone, the video is already playing, and it's this. Got a quick little update about that doucher, Derek. <laughs> he is now officially canceled. This is the best character in any piece of media ever made. This scene is complete tonal whiplash, and I immediately started laughing when I saw Jax again. He fills me with joy. For some reason, his whole thing is like jacking off, and, and like, you know. Fucking dick! Making jacking off your entire personality, you know. That is far off from real YouTube. Jax just keeps uploading videos harassing Derek, and the editing is just fucking deranged. I'm Jax, y'all. <laughs> Puka will come and beat the shit out of him. He looks like fucking Roderick. I love Jax so much. Can we can we see some J Jax love nowadays? Go make Jax fan art. Here's mine. Do you, you, th this actor, I love you. I'm a Jacker till death. All right, Jax like records himself doing the Puka challenge, and it consists of eating ashes and then dancing and then later that night he's like live streaming and then puka well nice. puka gets him i'm devastated uh, out of respect and memory i will now do the puka challenge oh, puka. <laughs> i love all the fight scenes because the movie doesn't want to kill off any of the characters so it's like a regular show fight scene and they're just like throwing shit at puka german shorts the ones like the high ones what? that the german kids what? wear what with the suspenders on them what are you talking about the stupid like german kids shorts with the green ones what? where the what guys this movie is so fucking funny i don't care why did they edit her what? saying what are you talking what? about like german three times <laughs> What if they, you heard knocking door from Jack and like, you want ugly? That only died three years ago, man. It goes in the like, I'm just kidding, man. Can we don't even know what he said? Like, we don't remember what he said after this. Like, what? It doesn't matter. We couldn't even understand. I remember him crying. <laughs> Got you! I got you! <laughs> hey, listen to this. Here at Spectacular Contraptions, really pride ourselves in bringing you the best in kids and children. I thought that was fucking MatPat talking. I don't think the movie does a good job at representing what the internet is actually like, but damn, the way it uses it in the story is actually creative, and I haven't seen another movie do it. This isn't like a super amazing movie that everyone should go watch right fucking now, but like, come on, I like it. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, think about it. This movie was a Blumhouse production, so the budget is already low, but it was also an installment for a Hulu anthology series called Into the Dark, where each episode is based on a certain holiday. So basically, your budget is a bunch of fake fucking toy money. For what this is, they did a good job, and I genuinely enjoyed good it. Good job, Jax. We're gonna call you Jack or... No, you're not. It's I guess... not gonna catch on. Fuck, I guess you're right. In Arby's opinion. <laughs> in Arby's opinion. <laughs> fucking intruding on a conversation. In Arby's opinion. In Arby's opinion. Fuck you, Arby's. That's not going to catch on. Who told you to speak Arby's? That's not going to catch on. In Arby's opinion. I could really end the video here. Actually, I could have ended it a while ago. But, you know, I, I want to go over some fan films because I don't want to make a separate video for them one day too hard. First off, I just want to quickly mention the VHS analog horror videos, th th they're kind of like short films. I'm only really familiar with them because I got really bored and started watching these Daco and 8-Bit Ryan reaction videos. Why do I always talk about Lewis Dawkins? I'm not a big fan of these videos or anything, but the videos made by Spectre are pretty cool. They're all really well done, and th there's about four that only get longer and longer until the force is like 30 minutes. They cover a story revolving around each of the Withered animatronics, and it's just really cool. Withered Bonnie is like an origin story for why he looks fucked. Withered Freddy's is probably the best. It follows a paranormal investigator asking questions to the spirits of the children, but they start attacking. And William, <laughs> Mr. Afton fucking just shoots him with a shotgun. I love the way William is portrayed in some of these videos because he's just a fucking asshole. Elizabeth Afton. I don't understand. Elizabeth Afton, I daughter of William I Afton. Don't I don't Why understand. don't you remember? Remember times? <laughs> yes. I seem to be trapped inside uh, the Springlock suit. He isn't like a killer with a knife. He's just like a fucking gangster and he just shoots police officers and shit. Where's your robot? I don't know. Try to call it back. 
You know, I'm almost tempted to leave that useless piece of shit here. I also like how he has control of the animatronics, meaning he's the one making them attack and the spirits are just dormant and forced to do it. I always thought it was weird how hostile the animatronics were to people who literally didn't do anything. The main characters in these are pretty funny, though. They're like the whitest people alive. In the fourth one, the main character just saw his partner get mowed down and shot to death, and like 15 minutes later, he's saying this. Well, look, there is still power. Hopefully, the phones here still work. I gotta make sure backup knows I'm here, otherwise they'd be looking everywhere to try and find where the action is. These are pretty neat, but also a bunch of pussy shit. Where's the live action fan film? <laughs> Got you now, you son of a bitch. Okay, this is a film by uh L L L G E. I skimmed through it, I'm sorry. It is rough, but it looks like the quality gets better halfway through. And now he wants you dead. What are you talking about? Did you not notice that every security guard inside that records book, besides me and Fritz, up until a few days ago, was dead? Yeah, I did find that a bit strange. But you, you want to know why I love this? Any sane person would have wanted to get, like, a location and good sets to make this, but not this guy, because he's fucking brave, okay? I'm not being ironic. This is a commendable effort. He went out and made a movie. That's amazing. L look at this chica and tell me it's not amazing. That chica is amazing. There's even a sequel to this. We're living among gods! <laughs> Jeremy! Who are you? Okay, here it is, our last movie. I really have been wanting to talk about this movie, and I was almost going to give it its own second channel video, but... This seems to fit more. Night 5 is a movie made by the people at X-Blue. They created an entire recreation of the FNAF 1 building for a challenge video uh, where they got a bunch of random people to participate in a real version of FNAF 1. God, I wish that were me. Oh, not the challenge. I meant that again. <sighs> Since they already had the set, they decided to make their own FNAF movie because the chuckle fucks at Blumhouse were taking too long. We can do better. Oh, no. I don't want to go over that much because you should watch it yourself. It really is impressive what they pulled off. It follows Michael Afton, played by this guy who just comes off as a shitty dollar store version of Mr. Beast in the challenge video. But here, I really like his acting. Like, yeah, it's not Oscar winning acting because that goes to William Afton actor. Evening, Michael. I love how he's just saying his big evil play. This is like that one scene where Charles Butts is intimidating fucking Carl and up. I've already tried killing you once. Now get the fuck out of here before I try doing it again. Big props for accidentally finding a guy who looks exactly like Matthew Lillard before the movie's casting was even revealed. This does a great job at adapting a lot of early FNAF things, like Phone Guy is an actual character, and kind of the main reason Michael is even there. And I really like whenever Phone Guy has anything to do with anything. Phone Guy is my... <sighs> The biggest problem is definitely the animatronics. Not only are the costumes not the best and probably made quickly, which I can't really blame them for, but they decided to, like, graft these bolts and endo parts onto the suits, like PNGs that, like, got tracked to the slits in the suits, and it looks awful. In their own commentary, they even think it looks awful, but... I honestly think a better solution would be completely blacking out the joints or just fuck it, don't do anything. I'm sorry, it looks so bad that I think it would be better just not to have anything. The movie also has a lot of frame rate issues, but this is because apparently the entire film was corrupted and they could only partially save it, which really sucks. They tried hiding this with a film grain effect, I think, and it just doesn't work. And the number one worst cinema sin with this movie. I really want to see fake Matthew Lillard be screaming. <laughs> And that's how far I am willing to go with this. And as I'm writing this, the FNAF movie isn't out. And hopefully when this video is out, it still isn't. Because this is a Halloween video, and I want it to be out on time. I think the movie will probably live up to the hype, at least for me and Lewis Dawkins. But the question is, will the FNAF movie be better than all of these alternatives? Well, yes. Yeah, yeah of course it will. But if Puka 2 is in the running, then not a fucking chance! Nope, that's not strawberry. At the driver, in the old man's farm, behind the bushes, so you got me screaming for mom. Hi, that was my video, thank you. I really hope that was a good Halloween video. I have to go watch Dear David the movie now. Um, uh, go check out my Patreon, I have stuff there, bye, I love you. Now get the fuck out of here.